Oh, I just got chills. I literally just got goosebumps. My whole body just went chill. I, oh my god. 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 Hey guys, what's up? Purple Nope here, and we're back with another episode of Tiny Bunny. This is going to be episode number two. Um, hopefully my voice lasts pretty long, considering the last uh, episode was fucking atrocious on my voice. Uh, scary game so far, honestly. Uh, even for a novel, like uh, a visual novel like this, it's it's been great. And let's move on to chapter two. All right, new school, n new school, new teachers, and most importantly, new classmates who I always have trouble connecting with, like most other kids with no glasses, probably. I forced myself to get out of my warm bed. Dad would usually drive me to my old school, but this morning in the bedroom, my parents was silent. Did they sleep in? Maybe it was a good thing. I didn't want to get the daddy's boy reputation from day one. My parents were probably still tucked in, dreaming about the good old days when everything was so simple and easy. Sweet dreams, even if far removed from reality. I silently sneaked out to the first floor so I wouldn't wake up anybody, especially the peaceful, peacefully sleeping Olya. I did my best to step on the middle of every floorboard. I used to play like this even in our old apartment. If my soles touched the space between floorboards, it counted as stepping into lava. The clock was spurring me on with its hands. I need to hurry. Faster, faster. I was too fast, so I needed to circle the hallway once again. Boiling lava was bursting out of the cracks between floorboards. I needed to watch my step to survive at any cost. Hippity hop, like a frog jumping on a molehills, like a fearful bunny in a groove full of wolves. Grove. I made a sandwich in the kitchen, shoved it down my throat, and drank it down with cold tea. My appetite was as good as someone with being led up the scaffold toward a guillotine. Jeez. I lowered my gaze and saw that one of my feet was standing on two floorboards at the same time. Burnt to a crisp, huh? I moved my foot. Disgusting little snakes withered in my belly. The fear of getting hit and being called nasty names. The clock clicked. I need to go. It was dark outside, fitting for an early winter morning. The darkness never fully left the house around here. I took my time trying my shoes, buttoning up the puffy down jacket, trying to delay my unpleasant exit into the semi-dark, into the unnerving unknown. I rubbed my glasses for good luck, though I couldn't remember a single time these thick pieces of glass brought me any good fortune. Oh, it looks so scary out there. The sky was akin to a giant bruise. On the east side of it, a black cloud was swelling up. It licked up stars from the sky and extinguished the rising sun. Darkness was plastered all over the treetops. The cautious cries of birds tangled up in the thicket. I locked the front door with a long key that I wore around my neck. My parents made me wear the noose, afraid that I, being a total klutz that I am, could lose the key and otherwise. Is that footsteps? Did you guys hear that? Was that footsteps? Okay. The wind whizzed on the other side of the gate. It invited me into my new life toward dubious adventures. And, ta and tagged alone like an old buddy pushing me in the back. Wide shadows that pines threw out covered a third of the clearing. Upon reaching the edge of the forest, I hid my nose in the coat's collar. I was squeezing through the thin fire break. My hair ruffled up and my back hunched over. Tall trees stood on both sides of the tiny trail. The snowy blanket rustled under my feet and the canopy of intertwined branches above my head cut me off from the already sparse starlight. The night had no plans of moving away from the forest. In this darkness, trees reminded me of shaggy old women that smelled of burial earth. Burial earth. Their trunks turned into cracked, wrinkled faces with old holes in their 
middle of their mouths. If I lost focus even for a moment, mold-covered witches would drag me into the forest depths. Then my parents would be walking around these parts, screaming my name. But the dead can't answer the living. Oh god. Or can they? Ah, dude, not the flashbacks. A sense of panic was growing in my chest. I was fine with dad carrying me into the school in his hands by now, but if it saved me from watching the darkness rise up in the ravines like black dough, it felt like someone jumped into the bushes behind me, so I turned. As soon as I started walking faster, I heard the snow squeak behind me. The forest took a deep breath with its giant lungs. The windfall cracked. The wind and the birds left behind in the field. Now I could only hear the forest creak. I walked, listening closely, and the unseen presence grew stronger. As if someone was following me, trying to match the pace of my footsteps. I turned my head so fast it made my neck crunch. A tiny trail behind me disappeared into the darkness. Three branches overlapped, forming a natural tunnel. Who's there? The question escaped my lips and dissolved into an unending creak sound of the wooden idols, the pines around me. Why did I think going through the forest alone was a good idea? I'm either going mad, or someone had intentionally lured me away from my home. Distant lights granted me a smidgen of hope. A country road! I ran there as fast as I could, as if I, if afraid that the trail would shrink. Clawed hands will grip me by the shoulders, turn me around, and make me look at the faces of hungry forest de de denizens. In the end, nobody stopped me. I almost flew to the decrepit wooden bridge, disbelieving my luck. The bridge's support bathed in a spring, terry and ice cold. I put my hands on my knees and looked up at the forest, then snorted, trying to calm my breathing. The thicket was pretending to be asleep. It looks peaceful, lifeless. The remaining part of my commute lied through a snow-laden road, illuminated by sparse lamplights. I chased away bad thoughts and ran as fast as I could, from one circle of light to another, seeking protection from electric lamps. Just like in the game, where you need to be the first to proclaim, I'm protected. It's just in that case that protection was flimsy at best, with darkness riding around outside its bounds. And I noticed something remarkably eerie. In a place where the light from an inclined lamp couldn't reach, a hairy, crooked shadow came alive with a gl glutteral roar. Oh fuck no. It almost felt like its features deterred light. It's unnatural pose instilled fear. My eyes almost popped out of their sockets as I just stood there blinking trying to chase away that illusion. But the shadow didn't disappear and even got closer. My insides were gripped by horror. I stepped back and almost fell into a snow pile. The black silhouette, on the other hand, straightened up and addressed me in a sweet voice. Sneaking around, huh? Trying to steal my soul? Words got stuck in my throat. Who could be talking in such a silky voice here? Between the forest and the dormant village. Will you say something, dummy? A cat got your tongue. Alright. I bite off your nose then. That'll teach you not to poke into a place it doesn't belong. The girl stood before me. Judging from the voice and the silhouette. I couldn't even reprimand myself for getting scared by a girl before noticing a gaping mouth under her hood with something dangerously shiny inside. I was stunned. Oh my god. In the cavity of her hood, a frighteningly real fox face was staring straight at me. It's just her jaws weren't moving and her eyes weren't blinking. A mask? It's just a girl, with a fox mask on. At least I wanted to think that. After a surprise like that, a nervous smile involuntarily crept onto my face. 
I I was just going to school, and th then you you. What about me? Never seen a fox feed a dog. And indeed, there was a small circling dog circling the girl's legs. One of the strays that were chasing me yesterday, probably. Sorry, I didn't mean to. After hearing my voice, the dog whimpered, lowered its ears, sniffed me out, and then started wagging its tail. I guess I still smelled of bologna, bologna and that I ate for breakfast. I was shifting my gaze back and forth from the dog to the girl. She didn't seem scary anymore, just weird. So you didn't mean to, huh? What's your name? I I'm Anton. And you? And I'm not. <laughs> She's weird. Definitely has a couple loose screws. She has a nice voice. My astonishment has turned into a mix of happiness and relief. This girl I didn't know was definitely human. A bit eccentric. I was also a bit angry at myself. This foxy girl was walking through the darkness without problem. And I shuddered from every little sound. I could just walk away. But this girl has piqued my interest. The next time a police officer asks me about my friends at the new place, I'll tell them that I befriended a talking fox. <laughs> uh, do you live around here? In the, in the village? The fox giggled and purred. She spun around so hard that the hem of her coat lifted up. No, dummy. Foxes don't live in villages. So, you live in the forest, then? Have you been living under a rock? It's obviously, it's obvious that foxes can't survive anywhere near humans. As long as they're foxes. Her jokes were also weird. Just like her carnival mask, papier mache with fur glued onto it. Dog reminded me as, as if its existence with a loud bark. I unfastened my backpack. Dad would sometimes throw food in there without my knowledge. Cookies, apples, or even my favorite crab sticks. He called it a gift from the bunny. The strays strolled toward me with menacing footsteps, with a pleading look in its eyes. The fox did definitely treat it to something, but it was probably still hungry. Why are you dressed like this so early in the morning? Going to a costume party? The girl shrugged, throwing silvery snowflakes off her nose, and her human form along with them, turning into a genuine beast, a real fox, agile, cunning, dangerous. A moment of hesitation and you will be ripped to shreds, will tear you up and gulp you down without breaking a sweat. I couldn't help but just stand there as a stump, <laughs> until I heard her calm, melodic laughter. Hidden underneath the beastly mask. I wish you could have seen your own mask, sweetie. Sw Did she just say sweetie? I got embarrassed. Went red up to my hair roots. We'd seen a fox in a zoo once when we went there with dad, but it had patchy fur. It was gray and skinny. But this girl was fiery color and fury furry. Just like in fairy tales. Definitely furry. I was still rummaging through my backpack. My fingers that were searching for the dog's treats stumbled upon some soft crumble object. You'll see. The real beast will wake up soon. You should ask them where they get their human faces. Girl Shadow is dancing the damp in the lamp's light. Dog yapped in agreement. I freaked out and dropped my finding in the snow without getting a proper chance to examine it. Old wind instantly covered the hole it created in with snow. The dog rushed to dig it out, wanting to get its treat. And the fox just snorted. Now I was so embarrassed I wanted to sink through the snow. It was still dark outside of the electric circle. On the contrary, the darkness seemed even more thick. All neighboring houses were sleeping deeply in its in inkliness. Alright, let me take a, a little break. I need a sip.
I need to put some liquid in my throat so I don't voice crack as much and so I don't, you know, lose the ability to talk. Also, let's let's recap real quick. She just said they wear human faces. Now, um, that's creepy, but how, how weird would it be if she was actually a fox underneath a fox mask? That would be terrifying. Also, her voice has a weird, like, reverb to it. I th it, it it's not human. Humans don't have reverb. I don't know how Anton's not picking up on the reverb. All right, back to it. I did my best to continue the conversation with the word girl I didn't know. So, are you going to school? Oh my, you are a real dummy. Don't you get it? Well, I was trying to be friendly, but she can't stop mocking me. Calling me a dummy and all. I should have just moved along with a pay without paying any attention to this weirdo and her stupid dog. Why are you so mean? Don't answer if you don't want to. Not like I care. Still, something froze me in place, hugging me toward the dark figure. Mysterious appearance, her voice that was velvety and just languid enough. I was intrigued and excited. I watched her as people watch fires burn. Oh, stop pouting. Look here. Soka took a liking to you. The dog was digging through snow with sharp movements, snoring loudly. The fox turned around and looked at the windows of a nearby house and its timbered front through the white mist. The tip of her fake nose was shining in the lamp's light. And maybe someone else too. I went red again, like a boiled crayfish this time. She was talking about herself or someone else. I hoped that Simi Dark would be able to hide my embarrassment from the girl. I cleared my throat before asking, and, and who's that person? I waited, counting my heartbeat. The fox didn't reply. Her sly stare was scanning the frosty patterns of someone's window. It was reading them like glass book. I wonder what she can see in those winter paintings. The stray stopped rummaging through the snow. It ran to me, holding my object in her jaws. A mitten? Could it be the one I found in the forest? What was it doing here? When I looked closer, I realized it was just my mitten. Maybe mom stuffed it in there when I was sleeping. A certain missy boy, missing boy immediately came to mind. Hey, do you know anything about Vova? I imagined the scene, silhouettes, dancing in the clearing. The dance in the night when Vova had disappeared. A boy, who when found, can provide a big reward and maybe save some of my family. I remembered my birthday, when our parents promised to take me and Olya to Disneyland in Paris. But instead of a long anticipated gift, they gave me a simple brick game console, visibly embarrassed. I was crying my eyes out back then, demanding to take me to the promised amusement park. That was the first time when mom and dad had a big fight. My greeting has shattered the relationship. If only I could fix everything. Gather everybody I love and take them to Disneyland. On the night Vova had disappeared, I think I saw someone looking like you dancing under my window. It couldn't be true, but I felt like her mask became more sly. The fox was sniffing me out. Oh. That got you worried? For yourself, or for someone else. Olia? As soon as I thought about my sister, my chest tightened. I could, and cold sweat streamed down my spine. Well then, listen closely, a boy named Anton. This is a big and scary forest. The fox girl stepped forward menacingly. And I'm not its only tenant. The other beasts already know about you. Beware, we'll come again tonight. 
I shouldn't have talked to this evil in child form. I thought, panicking. When you and your parents will be fast asleep, we'll sneak really close and dance. Macarena! Uh, uh, huh? Hey, Macarena! Hey, Macarena! <laughs> Look at you. Your mouth is agape. And Toja. He saw me near his window at night. Yeah, right. Are you by any chance a dimwit? Nobody would let me go outside that late. Children go missing here, you know? I touched the plastic frame of my glasses, puzzled by her silly joke. Got me scared to death. Hey, why don't you stop fondling your glasses? I was also nearsighted once. Listen to me and maybe you'll become smarter. Remember, what do they call foxes? C cunning? My words seem to hurt her. Hey! What did you... Um, sorry. Her laughter was akin to the jingle of a pair of silver bells. Just pulling your leg. Of course we're cunning. If you're agile and brave enough to befriend a cunning fox, I'll help you look for your vulva. There's a reason why you're doing it, right? I shrugged in reply. Her insight was alarming. I know why children have been swarming our forest recently. Sometimes you can find a lot of interesting stuff there. One day... I saw a huge pile of candy once, and I swam in, swam in it until my jaws cramped. Pile of candy? I couldn't deduce whether she believed in what she was saying from the tone of her voice, or I showed her another smile, a fake one this time. Boo! So wary. Well, that. Well, what will you say to this then? She held out her hand in a furry mitten. That's terrifying. There was an assortment of sweets in her palm. In the city where I used to live, sweets like these were sold at markets or in kiosks. I saw my favorite bubblegum in a vivid wrapper among the tasty treasure. A familiar name was on it. Turbo. <laughs> a triangular fox face poked her nose toward me. Take some. My pockets are full of these. Anton, do not take candy from strangers. Refuse. No thanks. I, I I didn't want to offend the person I've made contact with in this new place, but I also didn't want to take gum off of the hands of some weird girl. What if she found it in a snow pile? Or what if she's a if it's prank candy, the kind that blows up in your face when you unwrap it? I'm allergic to sweets. Aller what? She sounded puzzled. Are you living in the world of pills and mixtures? Well, more or less. <laughs> the fox whistled. Her palm was empty now. It floated in the air, catching snowflakes now that all the candy had suddenly disappeared. And you're only and you only celebrate New Year's once in twelve months, right? And you have those? He clicked her fingers, trying to remember something. Mondays! Yeah. I smiled. Man, you're a difficult case. I prescribe you a kilo of chocolate to battle your boredom, young man. Who are you? I refrained from asking that question. She wouldn't answer anyway. Or she'll just lie. I really wanted to see what's behind her mask. I was becoming more and more sure that underneath it was just a simple young girl. What if Ova was also, also found a snow pile of sweets and is now rolling in it? Actually, what if he decided to stay in the forest? He must be so cold without a second mitten then. How does she know? Wait, did we tell her about the mitten? The wind caught her words like smoke from a fire and carried them deep into the darkness, into the creepy thicket. 
The trees behind me creaked with their bony branches. Or what if something happened to him along the way? Something terrible. The forest reacted to her words. It became alive. It sniffed me out, perking up its ears just like a curious beast. The fox girl pierced me with her eyes once again. Wild beasts? You find that scary? Well, I, I don't know. He doesn't know. Oh my, I have prevented a dunce. I didn't like being called a dunce, yet being friends with her sounded nice. My grades are good. Really now? Will you come with me? Good grades, Anton? We'll find your Vova and you'll be able to ask him what he found in deep in the forest. As long as you're with me, nothing can hurt you in the forest. You'll see. Worms of worry writhed in my belly. Better run, whispered my mind. I don't believe you. Do you take me for a liar? Whether you're just like everybody else. The girl sounded hurt, although I didn't know if she was genuine about it. She turned around as if she had immediately lost all interest in me. I remember my dad's favorite saying, Where are your manners, son? Indeed, this fox was kind to me. Please don't get mad. Foxes can also be nice. Like in fairy tales. I just need to know what kind of fox you are. The girl giggled, hiding the nose of her mask in her hands. Then follow me into the forest and you'll get to know me. But not right now. When it gets bright, I mean, your whole body is shaking, you poor thing. I don't want you to get a stroke. Hey, let me accompany you to school. After hearing this, the dog barked in agreement and stopped messing with the men. I leaned in, trying to grab the piece of handwear that almost ran away from me. Well, if we're going in the same direction... That is terrifying. Alright, let's take a little break. I need to... Ah, my lips are getting dry from all this talking. Oh man. I don't know what to make of this. Obviously the big word here is cunning. Foxes are cunning. And honestly, I kinda, I kinda wanna go with her to the forest. You know what I'm saying? I kinda wanna see what's in the forest. You know? I just, just, just with her. You know, she seems like a baddie. I might want to hit that. <laughs> what am I saying? She's a fucking fox. Re disregard everything I just said. All right, back to it. We went toward the school and the, and the lost dawn. Here and there, the lights came on the windows of houses we passed, as if their inhabitants were sending us warning signs. Silhouettes lurked behind curtains. Dogs let out occasional parks. Spirals of gray smoke rose from chimneys. TVs bustled and dishes clanged in kitchens. We watched the village slowly rise from its slumber, while carefully treading the snow wheel trails. I walked in the left one, and she took the right. The dog was following right behind us. I expected the fox to bring up something weird again, but she stayed silent all the way to the school, as if playing with me some game only she was privy to. She would only giggle from time to time when the dog sneezed from the snowflakes that fell on its nose. I was the first to break the silence. So, what's your name? Here he comes. Names, names, names. You people always need to put labels on everything. What name would you give a fox like me? I don't know. But I've read about Alyssa the fox. You know what? I don't mind. I'll be Alyssa. I couldn't understand if she was joking or not. I turned around as, as if looking for an answer from the dog, but from the dark sky I devoted on. My silent questions were left unanswered. The school's outline was already in our sight. A giant brick box stuck in the endless night. Lights in its windows didn't bode well for me. The warden 
trees were guarding the schoolyard. Is that kid smoking? In the hoodie? Is that motherfucking kid smoking? Russia, man. Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Screams, childish laughter, and someone's whistling tore up the silence. I went here with mom when she was when we just moved and the place looked cozy at the time. Empty corridors that smelled of polish, puffy snow outside. The second time I came alone to get the books and just kept on imagining my peers rolling down the railings, grade schoolers, running to the library, and teachers marching down the corridor with the air of self-importance around them. Facts. High schoolers were smoking at the entrance, in track pants and wool caps perched on their foreheads. Their appearance destroyed the last hopes for a cozy school. Their stingy eyes and the teeth, yellow from nicotine, their smirks, all of it had the same gloomy effect as the cloudy winter morning. Absorbed by my thoughts, I completely forgot about my companion. I'll wait for you at the backyard after school. Near the hanging man. Near what? She just ignored my question. Don't be late. I hesitated. Blowing hot and cold air, cold again. Mom always said that when I was when I would have trouble choosing between two options. Think about mom, help me, re me reply. I'm going straight home after school. Well, Antosha, I'm going to let you off the hook. But the others will creep up to you with their smiles and sink their teeth into you. Won't be able to shake them off as easily. Remember my words. Huh? She... She opened... The, fo the fox opened her mouth in a wide yawn. What kind of trick is this? Someone running in the distance called out my name. I instinctively turned around. A huge snowball whizzed past my shoulder and hit the dog. Oh, you fucking assholes! It whimpered and ran toward the spring. The darkness devoured it. The fox girl was also nowhere to be seen. She dissolved into frosty air. Or was she hiding in my shadow? Hold on. Pause right there. Did she just open her fucking mouth? Did she just open her mouth and yawn? Okay. We're in Russia, right? We're in a poverty-stricken area of part of Russia, right? The mask is plastic. They don't have that shit that we have these days with these furries going around in 2021. That was a Plastic, that was a quote-unquote plastic mask. And she just fucking yawned. She opened her fucking mouth and yawned. Dude, Anton, why the fuck didn't you go with Alyssa? Why didn't you go with Alyssa? She just said, if there's people... Oh, mm, Anton, I'm mad. And I'm mad at whoever threw the fucking snowball at the dog. Fuck that guy. Or was she... Alright, back to it. Or was she hiding in my shadow? After taking a deep breath, I went toward the school, toward the cutlets and dough, toward the light raining down onto the snow. Oh, is there anything I can? S okay, just cough, cough in my ear, motherfucker. I did rewatch the uh, the video that I edited, and there were actually four things instead of three on multiple occasions. Let's go ahead and stop coughing, dude. Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and click on the car. There was a fresh looking Volga parked nearby with one of its front wheels perched up on the icy curb. Black like Seuss. As if it was straight out of the horror story Dad loved to tell me when he hid in the attic during a thunderstorm. I remember him always wearing a sad smile while mentioning the black car that snatched children. It's usually a white van, he would say. It looks like a funeral car on the inside. White curtains and all. And it has a DSC in its license plate. Do you know what that means? Death to Soviet children. Jesus. Funny, I was born in the USSR, too. Okay, that's that's concerning. Let's take a look at the, the bird's nest. Whose nest is this, I wonder? A thieving magpie? Are magpie the birds that, like, parasite other birds? Then it probably has all sorts of shiny things in it. Pieces of colorful glass, bottle caps, polished coins, or child braces. Like actual children braces? Let's take a look at this guy. A tall man was standing near the gate, puffing out clouds of smoke into the wind. He didn't look like a teacher. 
Was he the P guy, maybe? I carefully studied his face that looked like it was cut from a piece of granite and his harp line, his hair lip that was holding down a cigarette. He was playing around with the car keys and staring back at us. The light from the cigarette was reflected in his eyes that were sitting deep in his eye sockets. I froze in place. The hulking man lazily tore off his eye from us and walked toward the road. Oh, dude, that's disturbing. Let's look at the high schoolers that probably threw that fucking snowball. A, bro a buzzing crowd of upperclassmen with their winter hats tipped to the side. I'd better not draw their attention. Damn right, go straight in, kids. Don't even... Don't even... Oh, I could hear muffled voices behind the doors. Saw blinking lamps. Darkness creeped along the windows and it felt like the school was drifting open space like a lonely lost spaceship. After going up to the second floor, I, I noticed a crowd around the, the notice board. Everyone was taking part in a lively discussion. I moved closer and took a look at something everyone was interested in through a wall of backpacks. There was a piece of paper with something printed on it. It glued to the left on the, of the notice board. It's um, Vova. Oh, look how cute he is. Cute, cute, cute. Attention, child missing. Vova Makatukun. Makatukun? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ten years old. Ten years old, grade four. He left his home. Did they put his fucking grade? Like his overall grade, right beside his grade. Are you serious? He left his home on January the 5th, around 1600, and never returned. Was last seen at the bridge over the Somador River. He was wearing an orange coat with a hood, a black wool cap, and a scarf and mittens with green stripes. Might have had a plastic toy gun on him. Features, under, under 42 centimeters tall, skinny, brown hair, and green eyes. Please call these numbers if you have... Any information. Okay. Child missing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just goes over what I just said. On the granny pine uh, print, Vova looked dead with a black mouth and dark, empty eye sockets. It could be that the darkness dwelling deep in the forest invaded his pores and mutilated his face. A plastic toy gun couldn't protect him from the whispering branches and the howling wind. Empty eyes of the lost boy pierced through my soul, as if pleading. Unable to meet his stare, I turned around and rushed to the window. Took a seat on the windowsill. The corridor was slowly filling up with children in groups of few. Nobody paid me any mind. In the darkness of school toilets, child voices were hammering a nursery, nursery rhyme. For the fox and for the bear, bunny tasty meals prepare. I turned my head toward them, trying to get a better look at their features, but... Then my attention was stolen by a loud clicking sound. A female teacher marched down the corridor with her chin raised up high. Her heels were hitting the floor like miniature hooves. A girl was trailing her every step. Oh, she looks... Is that the fox? Look at her eyes! Look at her fucking eyes! Is that Alyssa? She was also... Uh, back to it. She was also looking pompous. Stomping along the way and whispering some secret in her friend's ear. She was probably a class rep since she was carrying an attendance register book. Ekaterina, возьми, Ekaterina, take this please. Can, can we like shrink that down to a name I can pronounce? Kate? We'll just call her Kate. The teacher opened the classroom door and the crowd of children swarmed in, screaming and pushing. Ah, oh, God. Out of all of them, a tall, red-headed, fat boy called my attention. His face was full of blisters. He looked like the insides of a pomegranate. God damn, you didn't have to roast that boy so goddamn hard, Anton. Holy shit. You got some mean intentions. A bad feeling rising, risen up in the air on the back of my head. I've seen boys like him before, unsettled eyes, crackling laughter. The girl, who was a smaller copy of the teacher, warned the boy with a wave of her hand and entered the room through the clearing in the crowd. Some other guy stood in the way of the crowd and the redhead immediately shoved him. Move your legs, moron. The boy flew head first, flailing his hands, trying to keep his balance. The fatso burst out laughing and a couple of kids joined his nasty crackling. Oh my god. 
The laughter sounded like someone was snipping with huge garden scissors. The classroom was sucked all of the kids in. The corridor stood empty. I wanted to grow roots and stay on the windowsill. What the fuck? Just a handful of lampposts outside were battling the darkness, withering like fluorescent fish in the black ocean. Maybe I can still run away. Go outside, dissolve in the dark. I imagined myself running through snow, how it squeaks under my boots, and how I'm becoming lighter and lighter with every step. Oh! The ringer's trill blew that illusion away. I tore myself from the window with great effort. Then I took a couple of deep breaths, trying to get at least calm down my mad pulse. And I entered the classroom. Oh, dude, don't scare me. Don't scare me. Who are those people? The prim teacher looked at me over the frame of her glasses, clearly annoyed. Ah, uh, I'm the transfer student. I was told to come here. The snowy forest trail was winding in my front eyes. The pines rustled, but it didn't sound predatory anymore. Hmm. hmm. She buried herself in the register and flicked through the pages. Your last name? P P Petrov. P P Petrov. Huh? What are you mumbling there? Say it clearly. Petrov. Petrov. You're not on the list. She measured me with a long and heavy stare, as if I was trying to see if I was lying. I wanted to sink through the floor. Hazy faces observed all of that from the left. The classroom breathed and snorted in a unison, like, li like a living organism. Like a dangerous beast. Are you sure? I don't have you on my register. My knees chose the worst time to start shaking, and I felt dizzy. I clutched my fist so hard, my knuckles became white. They told me to come to the classroom 204 to ask for Lilia Pavlovna, class 6C. <laughs> Apparently everyone in the classroom took my words for some sort of joke, because they were all laughing. What's wrong with this school? The classroom fell silent. The kids hid their smirks for a better occasion. Why do we hire so many interns? They all know how to put lipstick all over their bulging lips, but when it comes to real problems, I have to solve everything. How do they send you here without any proper paperwork? Ugh. We've had this same thing happen so many times already. Wait here, I'll be back. After I have a little chat with them. Uh, I get to sit in front of the whole class? The teacher flew past me, mumbling something to herself in righteous anger, and I was left standing at the center of the classroom. Like a convict in front of a firing squad, I lowered my gaze, feeling the mocking stares from all around the classroom directed at me. They prickled my skin, danced on it like laser sights. Once again, I imagined running far away from this place, Fighting the clawing wind, soaring high above the pines in one long jump, with the wind in my back as my only a companion. The eyes of my future classmates were asking, this new boy, is he one of the, one of us or an outsider? Somebody whispered something and I stifled, stifled laughter, rolled through the classroom, wiped the board. It was easy to guess who was the main prankster here. Hey, four eyes. Are you not only blind, but also deaf? I said, wipe the board. My knees were the only shaking part of my body anymore. I was trembling from head to toe. I prayed for the teacher to come back sooner. My prayers were answered by the powers that be. And what should I do with you now? Where will you sit? Oh well, you can't sit with Simon, I guess. Simon. He's all he's alone anyway. No way. The Vaso put his backpack on the seat beside him in defiance, scratched his belly and smirked. Are you back to your old tricks? Did I call your grandma here again? 
The classroom went silent. And what's she gonna do? I'll be the one to do something if she doesn't. Put away your backpack. Now. Semyon didn't move a muscle. He started studying the portraits of riders on the wall, looking bored. I needed to do something. To resolve this somehow. To save myself. I... I... I cleared my throat and continued to stifle... To in a stifled voice that sounded nothing like me. I, I can sit in the last row. I think there's a free seat. The teacher snorted loudly. He looked at me, then at Simeon, then back at me. Fine, go there for now. And you, Baborin, I'll have a talk with you later. Come to me after class. You'll be on cleaning duty, got it? Semyon forced out a twitched smile. Juicy pimples were growing on the lip, on the tip of his nose, ripe for the ticking. Disgusting. I walked carefully, afraid to stumble and fall, causing another outburst of laughter from everyone. I took my seat at the back, at the last table, where I was met with a pile of old posters. The outcasts took their seat, and the, and the class was ready to start. Now this is a settled. Let's start the class. Today's theme is traditions of Russian and international literature in Zohinsko's Da Don't Lie. The Faso turned back to me. His stare informed me of the coming days, weeks, months of bullying. I've got my eyes on you. That is what I look. Dude, just punch him in the fucking face. After just a couple of periods, I had already noticed a huge yellow spit stain on my notebook. Then, at the cafeteria, this Semyon accidentally spilled a glass of compote on me. And then he fa flailed his hands around after exiting the toilet so some of the liquid from his hands would get on me. <sighs> just before the final period for today, Semyon pushed me into a buzzing crowd of girls from our class. <laughs> Oof. Oh my god, no he didn't. No. They, they made way, cursing, but I couldn't hold my balance and ended up ramming my face into the girl I took for the class rep before, right in her chest. Oi. Ow. I immediately stepped back, dying from embarrassment. I'm sorry. Are you alright? Yeah. Ah. And she suddenly put her hands on her hips. Will you look at him? Groping me in front of everyone. I'll tell my mom. They'll expel you, pervert. There was some sort of sadistic pleasure in her eyes. As if she was a child who was about to put a lit up, light up match to the chaffier beetle. I didn't mean to. He pushed me. Well, we all saw that, you know. No blind among us. She stared at my glasses while showing me a creepy smile. I started to fume on the inside, but Simeon's laughter cooled my head. I pushed you? You sure? He swaggered up to me, enveloping me in the smell of sunflower seeds and rotting teeth, and then pushed me to the ground. Like this, huh? What you gonna do now? The bully towered over me, as if saying, Come on, hit me. Let me see you try. Mmm, do we fight back or do we endure? Anton, if you have the means to fight back, mmm, I wanna fight back so bad. I wanna fight back. I wanna, mmm. I'm throwing hands. These, these hands are ready to eat for everyone. I don't know. And uh, Anton seems like a pussy. Do I do I fight back and door? Hmm. The popular answer is definitely gonna be fight back, because I would fight back. I would I would kick this pimple riddled motherfucker's ass. Ah, uh, we're gonna endure. Oh, I'm sorry, Anton. I breathed in loudly, stood up, m massaging my temples. He made a mocking face as if asking me wordlessly, and what are you going to do about it? 
I looked at his red fist that seemed so big to me at the moment and realized if I said even a single word I'd get hit. And he'll keep on hitting me until I cry, or maybe even that I won't stop him. And nobody was going to help me. Sorry. I tripped. What a pathetic squeak. If you could actually burn up from shame, I would have been reduced to cinders by now. Learn how to walk, blind rat. I lowered my eyes and squeezed past Simeon. He showered me with the smell of decaying teeth. Bye-bye, sucker. The fatso let out a loud snort behind my back. Don't spit on me. My muscles became wooden. I felt him wiping his hands on my back. I continued walking, listening to the demeaning smirks from all the sides. It was even worse than I expected. I was late to leave the school after classes on purpose. Damien didn't attend the last period, so I was hopeful. What if he decided to dodge the cleaning duty and ran home, forgetting all about me? This was a relief. I didn't want to meet him in the empty hallway. The smirks of my classmates stood before my eyes like overturned horseshoes. My class had a lot of fun at my expense, but those who missed the show were asking the others to describe my bullying in full detail. Damn. I should have just transferred into a school for freaks. I'd be less conspicuous amongst hunchbacks, lame-legged, and disfigured. All the other students were leaving the school, laughing loudly. I was pretending to skim through the, my books near a window. I was staring outside, nervous. Simeon was nowhere to be found in the front yard or near the school gate. I didn't really believe I was the, this lucky. But I decided to be extra cautious and stayed for some more time in the corridor that was gradually getting less crowded. All of the bustle moved to the first floor. There was a skeleton peeking out of the biology classroom. Some jokester put a cap with the American co condor on its head. The sound of running water come, were coming from the bathroom. I was the only person left in the whole school. I'm not alone? A sudden thought came to mind. I remembered the missing boy. His portrait was on the notice board near the schedule. I remembered his smile. Him looking at me. And the fact that he's most likely already dead. Привет. Hello? I shuddered and turned away. Alyssa? At first, my eyes stumbled upon the black violin case. Then I noticed a girl from my class was holding it. Dude, that's definitely gotta be Alyssa the Fox. It's gotta be. That's a baddie in disguise, son. She sat in the first row of the second column. I could swear I caught her looking at me a couple times. Now I was sneaking glances at her myself. Sometimes it just felt nice to look at someone pretty. The spring. The sky, or a girl that's not in the crowd that laughs at me, Simeon's jokes. And she wasn't whispering the dirty laundry of the other people to Katya. She spent all the breaks just like me, staying in the classroom, or looking in the window, or drawing something in her green notebook. Hello. I turned red, and pretended I was studying the pattern of the wooden floor. I saw Babernian push you. Are you alright? The bump on my head hurt, but it wasn't all that much com uncomfortable. I'm fine. It's nothing. It's definitely not nothing. That idiot can't control himself at all lately. You should have punched him back. I mumbled in reply. Samuel wasn't like that before. He also transferred here just recently. His grandma told me that it almost felt like he went mad. I started shoving books in my backpack to at least put something in my hands. The girl looked at me with her clear, attentive eyes. Do you live over the river? In that wooden house? Yeah. Must be scary living there. And you also have to cross the forest? 
I wouldn't be able to do that. I shivered at the mention of the forest. I thought of the intertwining branches of a snake-like trail of endless darkness that spread like mold among the crooked trees. So well, I straight up lied. It's not that scary. What's so scary about it for you? She smiled after a brief pose, as if brushing off a daydream. Well, actually, never mind. My name is Polina, by the way. And I'm Anton. I already know that. Oh, I have to go to music class. She made a couple of steps and stopped. Amazing Polina. Didn't look like those beauties from the magazine posters or the actresses from the movies. She looked better. But in the flickering light of the ceiling lamp, she looked much more alluring. Can you play anything? My parents bought me a guitar a couple of years ago. I immediately remembered my meager attempts at music making. Uh, um, change. We're all waiting for change. Voice song echoed my thoughts and my desire to change something. That guitar got lost somewhere as if I were refusing to move to the old house near the forest. I think my parents gave it away to someone that needed it more. I don't, sadly. Pity. Oh well, I'll be going. Пока! Her shout was captured by the loud echo. Her shoes also echoed through the school hallways. Bye! I wasn't sure if Pauline heard me. I looked out the window again. Oh, I'm so sorry. And then would say while shoving me off the staircase in that way that could break my neck. Or, oops, did mean that after spilling compote on me on the cafeteria. And this kept happening every day. I couldn't relax for a moment because of the string of coincidences. And to my horror, I realized that it was only going to get worse. I couldn't do anything about it. I always walked looking down at school. And counted down minutes until the classes ended. Only in rare moments when I caught Polina's look on me, I choked from embarrassment and was ready to fight. But as if to mock me, nothing happened. And then my rage subsided and everything returned to normal. I always went home alone. First I slipped through the village, then over the bridge across the river, and then finally through the forest. The road slithered between the trees for around 10 minutes. There were no passerby, only cars slowly crawled past me, as if afraid to sink into snow. I tried walking as fast as possible, because branches, white from the snow, and black trunks created an illusion of someone wandering the forest. Somebody tall, sneaky, who can turn into a tree or a snow pile, and then, when nobody is looking at them, continue their journey along the road. Yo, Antoshka! My heart <laughs> nearly stopped. Oh, great. From the darkness behind the pines, just like the cavemen from their cave, appeared smirking Semyon with a bunch of his cronies. And who do we have here? Check out this four eyes freak. Check out the gap in your teeth, you fucking asshole. They surrounded me like a carnivorous pride, making me step back. The smell of sweat and tobacco attacked my nostrils. The inside of my mouth felt salty, as if I licked a battery. Look at this sucker, guys. He tripped so hard at school that he broke the floor. Who will repair it now? You will pay for it, wimp. Don't you worry, we'll teach him how to walk right. Look at that ring. That ring has some importance. Then he brought a sizable signet ring with some geometric shape carved in it. Up to my face. Sorry. Doing random shit in real life. 
All right, back to it. He brought a, a weird looking ring up to his face. In a moment, I'll hit you. Oh, I can't say that word. That's fucked up. Oh, I can't say that. That is so fucked up. In a moment, I'll hit your blank face so hard it'll leave a mark for the rest of your life. That's fucked. I should have fought his ass. Stop! A whizzing whisper left my lips and my head tilted forward, hitting Simmons' fist. Red sparks flew from my eyes. They're going to gang up on me and beat me up. Oh! Yes, yeah, Give my hand! Sammy gave me a rough push toward the bastard with the slanting eyes and he tipped me. I fell in the sharp crust of ice and the fat so stepped on my hand, preventing my, me from getting up. A painful groan escaped from my throat. Did you hear him whimper? He is, is he actually a blank or something? That's fucked. I started to lose breath from anger and resentment. Pain was growing. My ear was hot, and pulsating pain was shooting through it, like it was cut off and a ball of nettle was sewn in place. Why so silent, Antonska? Come on, tell us. Are you a blank? Can, all right, I will personally kick your ass. At this moment, I felt pure, unbridled rage, the uh, amalgamation of my anger. Like the sprout's ink, it rose up from the depths of my mind, Filling all my thoughts. Morons. Did you know that my dad is also a blank? Is also a blank? Wow. I'm gonna burst out laughing. That's fucked. This became the last straw. Fear and anger grappling inside me like mad dogs. He knows Akito. Got it? And he's a vet. He'll kill the likes of you with his eyes closed. One word from me and he'll... The boy in a tracksuit raised his hand, stopping the torrent of lies and made a couple of steps forward. Damien slowly backed off, giving me an opportunity to stand up. He was surprised for me. It was a surprise for me. Seems like Babirin wasn't the leader of the gang. In reality, they were all listening to the boy who was looking like a small carnivore with very strong, sharp teeth. Pines were swaying back and forth like Solomon Guardians. Did he believe me? Or was he confused by my face, twisted with rage? A vet, you say? My dad also fought in the war. In Afghan. And yours? Mine too. Oh really? And what force did he serve in? I stumbled. Fear chomped at my rage's throat and made it bleed. He's full of shit, Ramka. Sure as fuck, eh? Do you think I'm too easy to I'm so easy to trick? I can see through all your lies, little bitch. There was a nasty smile on his face now. This didn't bode well for me. Well, you've asked for this. You're fucked. That's right. Pray that they find your dead body come spring, eh? If only you stayed silent, wouldn't have lost a hair. Give him a good pounding, Simya. The delinquents closed in on me again, and I ended up in front of Simeon. Blood was pumping in my temple. Branches were swaying back and forth as if whispering something, giving me hope. I gritted my teeth. Fighting the thought that I looked silly, and took a boxing stance I often saw in the movies. What are you, fucking Mike Tyson? This was my first ever fight. I'll remember it for the rest of my life. If I don't kick the bucket, of course. At the edge of my vision, I noticed the darkness writhe again, writhe again, as if someone was walking back and forth there. I sensed Roma's claws grab my backpack. Give me your shit, Antoshka. It'll get in the way. I was about to refuse, unwilling to cooperate with the bastard. But then he fished a butterfly knife out of his pocket with one smooth motion. Spun it as if showing off and put the blade to my neck. I let out a cloud of steam instead of words. 
Ramka pulled with all his might, and my backpack ended up in his hands. Calm and relaxed. <laughs> An insidious smile on his face, he looked into my backpack. Are you hiding something from us? Some rat stole my school shoes? And what's this? Ramka gave me a dubious smile. Oh, great. Gonna dump all my shit, aren't you? So what do we have here? My text and notebooks fell in snow. He was holding my backpack in one hand and something weird in the other. It looked like... A mask. Roma lifted it high, as if showing to someone else. Someone in the treetops. In the twilight among the trees. An old bunny mask. Long, worn out ears, barely visible nose and whiskers. Manging from on the sides. Mangy fur on the sides. Where did it come from? Who put it there? <laughs> Semyon laughed. It was... It's way past New Year's, moron. Or are you really a loony? It's not mine. How come it's not? It was in your backpack. Rumka was watching the scene and unfold with an evil smile on his face. You know what? Put it on. Why? Because I'm telling you to. You'll hop like a bunny for us. Yeah, come on. Or we'll leave you pant pantless, eh? Anything but this. What if someone from our classes will pass by? For example, Polina. No. Danya, put it on him. Bayasha rushed to his friend's side and took the worn out mask from him with a boofish bow. Then he passed it to Semyon, who was already rubbing his hands in anticipation. I looked around the pine woods, as if waiting for help. As if the shadows that writhe around us would take pity on me and take my side. Branches looked like arms, twisted in unusual angles. Blackened bark was their charred skin, and the darkness was the smoke they produced. I can't run. Won't get away. They'll catch me. And then... Here. It'll fit better this way. Ah, oh, dude. He hurled a huge ball of spit on the inside of the plastic bunny face. And put it close to mine. His spit looked like a squash spider. Ramka's face twisted. He spasmed like a beast. Like he wanted to tell Simeon something, but then he suddenly stopped. Simeon was still close by, with a disgusting smirk on his face and a terrible smell coming from his mouth. Put it on, fast. Or you're dead. The mask would almost looked even more disgusting now, yet, despite everything, I felt like it was a chance for salvation. It could come, it could become my second skin. If only I was to put it on. If only my face was to touch its bumpy surface. I'm sure the fur will glitter, the ears will tremble like they were alive. I just need to put it on, and Semyon and his friends will be gone. Forever. Honestly, I would have taken it without the spit, not gonna lie. What happens if you just sit here? Obviously I'm gonna put it on, because there's no other choice. I reached out, my hand wasn't shaking anymore. <laughs> Alright, we'll take a break right here, hold on. I need, a, I need some liquid. This is fucked, dude. This is so fucked up. Hold on, look. Look at, um... Look at the gap tooth motherfucker. Look at his jacket. It says North, the North fake. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. It's always the less, um, privileged kids that always bully the fucking people trying to survive. That's fucked up. Man. You would think some of these creatures, I, th I would have thought Alyssa would have came and saved me, honestly. I can't tell if Polina's Alyssa or the, the teacher's pet. The teacher's pet seems like a less likely candidate considering that, um, she's kind of mean. She's kind of mean. The, the, the fox was 
cunning. It wasn't mean, but cunning. It wasn't too mean. She did call me dumb a couple times and a wimp. But uh, yeah, these these guys are fucking assholes. Get back to it. Jemian handed me the mask and let out an evil laugh. The fur felt warm to the touch, just like I expected. I got goosebumps. Electricity flowed through my spine. This is it. My salvation. A voice whispered to me from the well of my subconscious. Just put it on and nobody will hurt you. The forest froze, gazing at me with cracks in the dark. I acted slowly. I took off my glasses. Got rid of the nasty spit on the paper mache. There was movement inside the bunny's face. As if something was trying to break out. And I needed to help it. I lifted up the mask and started moving it toward my flaming cheeks. Just like in that movie with Jim Carrey. The mask had power. And strength. Car Carton touched my skin. Uh, it enveloped my skull, my nose, took the shape of my face. It smelled like an animal layer in pine. My lips touched some sort of hard, wavy material. My armor. Strangely enough, through the slits of the old carnival mask, I was able to see as good as through my glasses. A trio of boys, frozen in the clearing. Snowflakes, frozen in the air. The trees whose shadows formed black streams toward me and a weird silhouette in the early twilight behind the windfall. Where? Where? In all that silence, Simeon nervously whispered, uh, Hey, so guys. What's up with them? I brought in my shoulders. My muscles felt like they were made of steel. Invin in invisible plumes of fog flew toward me, breaking off the trees. I was absorbing the forest's power with every pore of my body. I smiled underneath the mask. No. I showed my teeth. My fists were itching. My stomach was growling. He's turning. You asked for this. I made a step forward. Demon carefully stepped toward me as if he was walking on thin ice. A trail from my dreams snaked in front of me again. Endless, alluring, it was beckoning me away from all the problems to the new wonderful world, the world of magic Neverland. I pulled on the zipper, opened my coat, and threw it into the snow with a fast motion, then growled. I felt like something was frantically looking for the exit underneath my skin. I went towards Simeon. He's turning. Fuck. Turning into a fucking retard. Oh, I can't say that either. Whoops. The clearing blew up in hysteric laughter. Bayosha was clutching his stomach. Roma smirked, shaking his head. And Simon, who was laughing the most out of the three, spat on his knuckle and waved his fist like a club. You're such a moron, Tosha. At a first, a fist collided with my mask. The fur didn't dampen the blow at all. There was no power, no magic, smoke coming from the pines. I flew toward the bushes and landed on my butt. My vision, bolstered by adrenaline a moment before, returned to normal. Now that was something. I thought he'd get on all fours and tear us to bits. Like a carrot. Yo, did you see that? Eh? Did you? Does this count as him hopping? This was even better. I sobbed. The mask had one advantage. If I cried now, nobody would see my tears. What a loony. You belong in a loony house. Or animals, eh? Simon put his knee into the snow pile and ripped the glasses out of my numbed finger, my numb fingers. Give me my glasses back. I won't make it home. Bullshit. Haven't you heard that bunnies have good sense of smell? 
Oh, don't worry, just use it. Hippity hop, hippity hop. And then shove the trophy into his pocket and flash me a toothy grin. Besides, bunnies don't wear glasses. Now scram, R word. I stood up, still wobbly. The trees became blurry, dark wall. Three bright silhouettes were wobbling around me. There were black spots on them. Their eye sockets and mouths. But it looked to me like there was more of them than it should be. I turned to the forest. Damien's boot came to my rescue, kicking me in the butt and quickening my shameful retreat. Brick -cock, brick -cock. Hippity hop, hippity hop. I threw the mask into the ravine out of spite. And then zigzagged through the fire break alone in a dark, giant, snow laden world. The trunks around me bent in all directions. Their treetops disappeared into the darkness above me. The sky was pushing me down. I wanted to cry, but my eyes were completely dry by now. Only sadness and longing were left. A desire to bury myself under the snow or leave the Neverland, joining Vova and Sinya. I didn't care where to go, just somewhere far away from here. Somewhere very far away. Hey, what's this? Where are your glasses, Anton? Did you lose them? See, I... How can you be so careless? Do you think I own a money printing press? Yeah, right. You'll be wearing your old glasses until next year. Oh, you rushed to me. I saw a fox! A prize akin to a shotgun blast. I could only flap my lips and reply. A cup shattered into many little pieces with a loud thing. My mom left it fall from her hands. Let it fall from her hands. Her face was pale and her eyes were glued to the ground. This pause, just a split second, felt like an eternity. Then my mom spoke with disappointment. First it was an owl, now it's a fox. Will you ever get tired of this? But it's true! She was so fluffy! She stood on her back legs, near the hedge, just like a person. The fox called my name, but then mom came and she fled. There was no fox. Stop making things up. Don't go near her. If it was necessary, I was ready to shake my sister as if she was a doll made of cloth. What's wrong, Tosha? Don't go. You hear me? Mom entered the hallway and gave me a surprised look. I hesitated. Well, a, a fox will bite you. I remembered fairy tales where foxes used to kidnap children. I imagined Alyssa, liberated, carnivorous, running through the night forest with a dangling sack in her hands. It wasn't a real fox. Tell him, oh yeah? She stood on two legs and she was wore a dress. And she was real. See? Mom showed us a tr tired smile, as if it was the only explanation needed. I also forced myself to smile. My, sm my smile was like a thin piece of soap. Right before it dissolves completely on your palm. But then, I was left alone with my sister. I whispered, If you see her again, run. I shoved my eyes and threw the vitamins in my mouth, washed them down with water. Please, stop driving me mad, please. I was doing my homework on a Friday evening like usual. I had already finished the hard part. There was only my art homework left, my favorite subject. We're gonna draw? What are we drawing? Oh, it's a cat! Oh, a magic beast. I needed to draw some sort of magic beast. Oh, it's a Triceratops. 
I wanted to draw a dino at first, but my brush reached toward the orange paint all by itself. What the fuck? I'm sorry, what? Here I thought I was gonna go through this whole fucking episode without getting scared. Are you serious? One stroke after another, the picture of a fox started slowly forming on a piece of paper. It was almost popping out of the snow white sheet. She stood on her back legs and wore a sly smile. My brush moved again, drawing a fluffy tail. A moment later, it dropped out of my weak hand. After I finished my drawing, I spent a while studying it in surprise, as if I couldn't understand where this red beast came from. The longer I looked, the scarier her smile felt. Carnivorous. Fake. Like the smiles of a woman forming adult magazines that were sold in press kiosks back in the city. An alluring smile that masked deep-seated malice. And the fox's eyes turned out red as if bloodshot. They looked more like a bullet holes you see in action movies. I don't remember drawing them this way. I moved away from the table and the lamp's light reflected from the wet paint. The drawing was glossy. It felt like the fox was watching me. Waiting. They oh, Jesus Christ. Are you deaf? I, I was just thinking. I'll ask you again. Have you seen your sister? She's hiding somewhere again. Something moved under my bed and I froze. Olya's dirty face peeked out with a finger pressed to her lips. Shh. Olya, I can see you. Get out of there. You're covered in dust. Olya crawled out from under the bed and I started dusting off her stockings, looking down. Let's go. I'll read you your fairy tale. Why is she crying? Keep you company until you fall asleep. I want to sleep with you, not in that room. It's... I'm into the room. What? The hell again? And what do you think? Olya, it won't come anymore. I chased it away. Olya shook her head in defiance. You didn't. And it will come. She said that it will come every night. Oh, she talks now. Olya ignored the question and then asked with newfound determination. Can I sleep with you? Please? This will be the last time. Why don't... Why don't let her sleep in my room? I thought it was a great idea, but Olya shook her head again. No, I don't want your room. It watches you too. Say what? Huh? You hold on. Oh yeah, you wanna run that back again real quick? You wanna tell me what you just said? No, I don't want your room. It watches you to Okay, you know what? Can we move? Can I want take me back to school. I'll take an ass whooping. Honestly, I'd rather get bullied than be watched by a fucking demon. I felt goosebumps all over my body. Enough. There's no owl. You're sleeping in your own room tonight, got it? Mom. Please. Please. Mom took Olya's hand and tried to lead her out of my room. Let's go, sweetie. Don't bother your brother. Olya clutched the bed's head with her free hand. Please. 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 I don't want to go to it. Mom was tugging Olya to her toward herself, but she didn't budge. Only the bed's head squeaked in agony. Dad intervened by picking Olya up and carrying her out of the room, despite her desperate protests and pleas. No! Don't take me to it. It's going to watch me again. I've listened to them struggle to make my little sister go to bed for a while. In the end, my parents gave up and let Olya sleep with them. But it was surely the last time ever. When everybody settled down, I was lying in my room, thinking about Olya's words. It's watching you too. That is terrifying.
I felt uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable, Anton? I feel uncomfortable. We feel uncomfortable together. I barely managed to calm down only after closing the curtains in my room shut. But as soon as I closed my eyes, memories of my day started jumping around in front of me. I was in the middle of the stuffy school corridor. I could see the literature classroom from here. The faces of dead classical writers on their portraits. The prim and regal pose of our homeroom teacher, Elia Pavlona. And around that corner was her daughter, Katya, a snitch, a gossip, eagerly waiting for me. Hey, Norinji. Hey, chance for student. Chance for student. What do you want, Katya? She got on her tiptoes and started swaying while holding her hands behind her back and then asked me with a fake smile on her face, Can I ask you something? Why did you get transferred here? I might have told the truth but about this to Polina, but Katya will sell it on the market for three kopkes. It would be the same as printing all my thoughts and hanging them near Volva's picture for everyone to see. So I reverted to an answer I knew by heart. It's all because of my parents. Dad has a new job here and my mom... My mom? But Katya didn't even listen to me. Just rushed toward the perked up ears of her friends. Whispered something while stealing glances at me and giggling. Yeah, right. He takes us all for fools. I've heard it's all because of his father. He crossed the road of some big shot and now their family is hiding in our remote little village. That's not true. You're lying. And did you hear? Did you hear about Bubber and beat him up? And all he could do was look all pathetic and take it. Stop it. You know he wasn't alone. And if that wasn't enough, there were our rumors that this weirdo carries a bunny mask with him wherever he goes. Who in their right mind would do something like that, huh, girls? I see. I see. Our Antoska must be truly special. Maybe he's an autist, but what if he's a serial killer? I'm sure you'll be able to find an axe in his backpack if you look hard enough. Or something even worse. Yes, yes, yes. Shut up. Look at him scream as if something bit him. His pupils. Oh, look how wide they are. I hope we won't go insane and resort to violence again. I mean, there must be a reason his mom always feeds him those pills, right? I just stood there in confusion. Trying in vain to understand how she found out about my medicine, and what scared me even more was the possibility that her nonsense had some truth mixed in. Yeah, that's right. He's an insane as his little sister. Can you imagine that she she says a human-sized owl visits her every night? But not a single healthy person has seen it. And this simpleton believes her. Can you imagine that? And then I caught a single kind look from the smirking crowd. How can it be, Anton? Are you really... Are you unwell? Paulina, please, listen to me. Yeah, right. Don't listen to this liar, Politkaka. Oh my god, that's a long name. This loser can't even stand up for himself. He won't be able to defend you if it comes down to it. He'll run away to protect his own skin. Weakling. Polina slouched as if someone kicked her in the stomach, and then burst out in tears and fell to the dirty floor, wailing and screaming. No. No. Why, Anton? Why? I couldn't understand her reaction, but I still rushed to Polina's side before getting shoved violently by Katya. Get your paws off her, you monster! Rage was building up underneath the veil of my fear. 
it slowly rose from the cloudy mist. I felt my upper lip, lip left creep up, showing my teeth. The fact that your father beats your mother doesn't give you the right to do the same to girls. My fists became hammers. I couldn't unclench them. Nobody can speak about my family like that. I came to my senses when I had already lunged at the angry Katya. Aha! He went nuts! Nuts! Help! Help! Patron went completely insane. At the same moment, the crowd around her became louder. It started whistling and roaring. And growing. The subtle silhouettes of my schoolmates became larger and wider. They shot upward toward the ceiling. Turned into a giant black forest chock full of toothy faces. I shrank to a tiny ball of fur, started shaking in fear before the might of ulcer ridden trunks that belonged to the either the trees or humans. It was impossible to tell. So you've finally shown your nature. Coward. Katz's face was twisted with jubilation and ecstasy. And Tom. Why? No. Why did you do this to me? When I screamed while choking on tears. What the fuck is that? He is just an animal. An outsider. Oh my god. Oh my god. A scary flap. A scary flapping of wings came from the forest. A pair of giant white ears descended somewhere from above and I dug myself into them. Anton! Anton! Please. Oh yeah. Wake up. Again, I jumped up, almost falling out of bed. Apparently, I was thrashing around for hours on the sweat-soaked sheets. Oya's scream pulled me out, set me free from the tentacles of fear. What? Is she in the fucking blinds? The curtains? If so, that is not Oya, because Oya wouldn't go near a fucking window right now. That is not Oya. I can promise you that. That is not Oya. Anton! Please. Last time, last time Oya called for help and said, please, we got bum rushed by a fucking wolf. Wake up. Wake up. It took my eyes a while to focus on the silhouette near the window. Oya's voice was distant. My head was still ringing after the fight. Sounds got distorted, as if my ears were stuffed with cotton. My, my sister, as, as distressed as ever, just kept on repeating the same phrase. The owl. The owl. Please. I'm scared. Her tears poured on my heart like boiling water. But I was almost thankful for the owl's appearance. Otherwise, this scared Oya wouldn't have woken me up. Wait a second, Oya. Let me read Mazaka for you. Give me. I placed my bare heels on the cold floor. Felt around for my glasses. Remembered Simon, his underhanded act inside. I'm done. Please, please. Look. He couldn't tear her eyes off the window as if it was staring. It was a staring contest. I found the light switch with my hand. The lamp poured bright light all over me. I got up. My vision fooled me, moving the window closer, only to push it farther the next moment. My sister was just a blurry spot. I took a hesitant step forward. Oh yeah. Who's there? What happened? Do you want me to open the curtains? Oh fuck, that was to the left. That that voice was to the left. No, please don't. The owl was there. Is it fucking moving? Is that shadow fucking moving? The voice was coming from behind. 
Oh, I just got chills. I literally just got goosebumps. My whole body just went chill. I, oh my god. 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 I literally just got chills. I have, oh, you guys can't see it, but I have goosebumps. God, I turned around and froze from terror. Teary eyed. Oh, he stood in the doorway. Who? Who are you talking to right now? She stared at me with the eyes that were red from crying, with her hands wrapped around her shoulders. Her voice was nervous, as if she was afraid to hear my answer. I was talking to you, to someone who pretended to be you. The ledge outside my windows creaked ominously, as if something huge was sitting on top of it. Oh, great. And the thing that pretended to be Olya started spreading, changing shape, grow to scary heights under the light of a carnivorous moon. Anton... Please... Come closer. Come here. The voice didn't belong to my sister anymore. The thing that was hiding behind my curtains got scared of pretending. Making me look like a fool. I pinched myself as hard as I could. Hoping that the silhouette near the window was just a continuation of my nightmare. A hallucination. Brought upon by the cursed house. And those don't bite. Do they? The silhouette was towering before me under the veil of the mist. I heard only a shrill scream when someone had knocked on the window. Oh great. Can you get us? Another knock. I stepped back into the middle of the room, and as if there existed nooks where I could hide from the horror, the sound was sharp, metallic. The lamp started shimmering, then it suddenly lighted the hole and went out. Like a candle under a strong wind, the fulfillment inside it snapped with a ringing sound. Oh, fuck me. Please don't. The darkness that was waiting for the exact moment poured from all the angles and enveloped me. There was only this window left in the whole universe. Moonlight poured through it, painting everything the color of bones that were exhumed from a crypt. Oya started squealing and pressed herself onto my back, seeking protection. And then, an eye, burning with a carnivorous fire, stared at us from the window. Oh fuck. No. It wasn't trying to break the window. It was toying with us. It just kept on knocking. Driving us mad. As if a giant clock was measuring the time left for us. Its pendulum swinging above the abyss. She was screaming in desperation. Her hands clutching my arm like a pair of pincers. Anton. Anton, come closer. I could barely make out a pair of wings that spread out above the black spot. Tell her, Anton. Tell her that it won't be a bad girl anymore. Never, ever. Why are we getting closer? I just wanted to. I just wanted to leave. Me too. Please. The moonlight suddenly disappeared and the room descended into darkness. We couldn't see the burning eye anymore. I swallowed the stingy lump that was stuck in my throat. I stepped toward the curtains and entranced by the call of the disfigured guest. Oya was standing behind me mumbling. I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be good. The bleak windows creeping closer. Curtains rustled. I reached out to move them aside, so I could look my fear in the eye. At that moment, I heard a noise coming from our parents' bedroom. Without thinking, I pulled the curtain to the side in one swing. Nothing. Though, there was something shining on the ledge among the scattered feathers. My glasses. The one that Simeon took from me. How did they get here? Was that a gift from the gurgling night? Did that owl really bring them here? I looked at the front yard, at the foreboding clearing, at the toothy forest. 
Not a soul. Not a trace of our late night guest. Only the old lamppost, dreaming like a lone watchman among the snowy desert. The dry window frame creaked. I tore away the insulting tape and the stripes of glued newspaper. Opened the window with big trouble. Ross Pine pinned with me, me with its little needles. The paintings on my walls moved from the draft. I touched my glasses. Sure, they would melt in my hand, but they were real. My brain was scrambling for an explanation. Semyon and his gang just pulled a prank on me. That was it. That's it. A smooth white blanket was glittering under the street lamp just outside our yard. If anybody was to get close to the house, to climb the pipe to the ledge of my window, it would surely leave footprints. But there were none. I cautiously took my glasses. My wrist was still intact. Nobody pulled me into the darkness, full of restless rhythm. Why aren't you in bed? I swayed from surprise and almost fell out of my window. Are you out of your mind? Did it feel hot in here? Do you want to catch a cold? The owl was here. Push it tasted away. Go to your room immediately and get in your bed. And then, and you. Mom paused, directing her seething eyes at me. She was thinking of a punishment equivalent to my crime. In the end, she just waved her hand, took Olya by the shoulder and left, throwing gloomy words my way. We'll talk tomorrow. I managed to get the frame back in place with a couple of hits, pressed in the latches with all the strength that my fingers could muster. You might want to triple lock that motherfucker. The cold left the room, but the fear was still present. I placed my glasses on my nose and started studying my reflection in the window. It didn't look like a face, more like a death mask, just like the one worn by the boy from the notice board. That night, I was on the edge of joining him there. A black and white face was staring at me through the clearing between student heads. And it wasn't Vova. His face was right beside it. I recognized the fat cheeks, the damaged skin. Damien. Baboon's photo was printed out and placed under the glass like an exhibition piece. Damn. Al got Damien. That was episode two. We are deeply grateful for everyone who purchased the game in early access. All the profits will go toward further development of the game. Dude, that was episode two. Are you serious? How deep are we? One hour and 42 minutes. Holy shit. Oh, those figures weren't there before. I just, I'm pretty sure they weren't there before. Oh my god. Wow. That was crazy. I like that. That was nice. Dude. Oh my goodness. I've never had a game give me chills like that before. Holy moly. All right. It's, it's been a long ride. If you guys watch this all the way through, oh, you're the goat, honestly. And honestly, you might like this game. Uh, I'll definitely, I always have the games that I play, uh, unless it's like a made up game that I made inside of a game or inside of something else like uh, Pokétainment. I do those videos. Um, but um, I'll leave it in the description, uh, all the way at the bottom if you're curious where, as to where it is. Uh, yeah, play it yourself, man. Ugh. It's so good. It, it literally gave me chills. I'm not a person to get chills like that, and it was so good. Honestly, I can't wait for more episodes to come out, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to cover them because I really like this game. Not huge on horror, not huge on visual novels, but this game is nice. I really like it. Um, thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.